Hi, I'm Dan Hooden, president of Hudson Forest Equipment with a brand new sawmill that I want to introduce you today. So we came up with this new warrior sawmill to honor our vets in the United States and those that gave their lives for the freedom of the United States. So welcome to our video and we hope you enjoy it. Unpacking the warrior crate for your new sawmill will be a little bit easier if you can have someone, one of your friends or someone help you along with this. It'll be easier for you and probably a little bit more fun. What we're doing here is separating the boxes from the actual mill itself, laying them out so you can see exactly what you're dealing with. You will be cutting the bands that actually hold the sawmill into the platform itself. Parts boxes will be laid out so you can again see them clearly and know what we're dealing with here. Releasing the crate would be better off with two people if you can. Pull it off to the side, and just pull it away from the crate, and then you'll be moving your crate out of the way. After you remove the mill from the crate, you might find that the head unit itself is stuck from shipping. It is important at this time to take your lubricant and spray it on both up and down of your rails itself. After being lubricated, see if you can move it back and forth freely. Make sure that you have spray both on the upper and lower ends of it. Regularly you want to keep your lubricant on the post Keep them so they do not become dry, because if they do become dry again, you may run into a sticking problem. This is a list of tools that will be required to assemble your mill. These are the same tools that we use in our own shop when we assemble our own mills. We're separating our parts boxes and taking the parts individually out of the box itself which are already labeled so you know what you have in front of you. The first assembly will be our winch that we're dealing with. The winch is held in by three bolts. We will put it in the front of it, drawing it to the rear, and you will put the hardware that has been packaged with it together. Make sure it's tightened down good and tight. And we will now install the handle of the winch itself. What you'll have to do is take a pair of grips, hold the bar tightly, just remove the bolt from the winch itself, screw your handle on, and replace the bolt, tighten down, and you will be releasing your vice grips. After our winch has been completed, we'll be installing the cable assemblies. What we're doing is laying our parts out, so it'll be easy for you to assemble. Our parts will be going on in the exact same fashion that you're seeing. Take your time in doing this, no rush. What we're doing now is we're placing our roller assemblies into the bracket unit itself. Placing the bolt through and tightening down. Make sure that you have this tightened down securely. Make sure that your wheels will be moving freely. We are now moving to the other side of the frame to the lower bracket itself. The lower bracket will be done first. Again, make sure it is secure. Once you have that in place, tighten down securely. Make sure that your wheel, after you tighten it, will be running free. Next one will be our top pulley itself. Again, same scenario. Run it on through. You'll need a larger washer first, then a standard washer then your lock washer and your nut. 
Again, once assembled, tighten down securely. Step three will be to install our two eye bolts. Take them out of the package itself. What you'll be doing is the nut will go on first, your washer, washer underneath the bracket, and your lock washer, and again, you'll be tightening it securely. Once the one side is done, you will move to the other side and repeat the same operation as the first. We're moving on to step number four, which will be to install the cables that will lift your head. What we're doing here is we're putting your cable with your eye from the bottom up. You'll be securing it from the inside with the bolt that comes with it and again your small bracket to hold your loop and then your nut will go on top of it. Be sure to use the long cable on this. Once that is done, make sure that it is secured correctly. After the cable secured, we're putting the cable through the winch itself, through the inside. We will be rolling the cable over the top pulley itself running it through to the other side running it over the right side roller now this is very important where this cable goes incorrectly as you see where I'm pointing that will be the roller where the cable will be the cable itself will be slid through the eye bolt your two fasteners will actually be above the eye bolt itself, securing the cable in place. Slide your clamps all the way down to the bottom, making sure that the tension is put on it as you go. Once uh, you have it, you will take your vice grips, secure the cable itself, pulling upward on it, making the cable tight, and then tightening down your two clamps to secure it. Again, it's very important to make sure that both these clamps are going to be very tight. There will be a lot of pressure put on these cables as the head is brought up. What you'll be doing is taking up the slack on your main cable itself before we get ready for the second. Run the shorter of the two cables up to the bottom of the pulley over the top and secure to the main cable with three cable clamps. These need to be tightened very securely. You will notice that all cable clamps are facing the same way. Again, make sure your cable clamps are tightened securely. With cable secured, you will take your cable that you've been dealing with and run it across the opposite side of the mill. You'll be dealing with the lower assembly, running your cable over the top of the roller. be running it down to the eye bolt. You'll run the cable through the eye bolt itself, install your clamps, and the procedure will be exact as you did the first one. Make sure your clamps are tight and secure. Once secured, take the slack up of the cable by turning your winch. Mounting our track wheels onto the machine itself, it's very important that the washers that are included in the kit be put in the correct order. Here I'm showing you the correct order of the washers themselves. The same scenario will be repeated on all four sides of your mill.
Again, once on, tighten down securely. Make sure that once it's been tightened, that your wheel will move freely. Your measurement will be taken from the outside of one wheel to the inside of the other. The correct measurement will be 34 and 3 quarters inches. This is very important because if it is not correct measurement, it will not fit on the track correctly. Install your track on a level surface. Just a note, a section can be used for assembly. Complete track can be assembled at final location of your mill. In aligning the three sections of your mill, it's very important that you try to keep the mill level. You can use one or two by fours to do this process. Once your mill is starting to go together, what you want to do is install your hardware, but do not tighten. All bolts should be put in the other sections together, but again, do not tighten. Check the level of the shims as needed. You may have to go back and forth a couple of times to make sure that the track is in place. After that's done, make sure that all your hardware is securely tightened. Install your mill stops in all corners and tighten hardware down good. Placing the mill on the track will be easier done if you have two people. Lifting each side, lift it up the first two on the track itself, lifting up the rear and just putting your other two track wheels on the track itself. Secure the track to the frame itself with a pair of vice grips so it will not move back and forth on you. Our next installation will be the one inch off deck bolt installation. What we'll be doing is we'll be coming from the bottom up, screw it into your bracket itself. Once that's done, put your 3 8 nut on it and tighten securely. Now we're ready to add the main bearings themselves to the mill itself. With all your parts laid out, you'll be starting on the side where the winch is mounted. Bushing on the wheel should be on your left hand side. We'll be adding the four long bolts in. Bringing your wheel assembly up from the bottom, putting your washers in the correct form, tightening down. Once our main unit has been secured, we will check the wheel itself to make sure that it's straight vertically. If it is not, what you'll need to do is add a shim or two to either side of it to bring the wheel to center. Once your shim has been put in place, check, make sure it's in the middle. If it is, we are ready to continue. Moving to the other side of our mill, it's very important that we take our belt assembly and insert that in first. Our next step will be our main bearing locking bolts. Place them underneath and do not tighten them fully at this time. We're going to leave them loose. Mounting the main bearing unit on the other side will be the same procedure that we did previously. Main bearing will be put in place. The hardware will be set up accordingly and the unit will be tightened down. Again, your measurement is taken to make sure that you're straight in line. If not, again, the shim will have to be added to one of the two sides itself. Again, bringing that wheel upright so that it is perfectly straight.
Once everything is perfectly level, it'll be time to move on. Our next step will be to run a straight edge from wheel to wheel to ensure that the alignment is correct. It'll be important that the wheel alignment is correct on this simply because to run your saw blade straight and correct. If it is off on it, what we have to do is hit your main bearing on either side of your holder in order to bring that into position itself. Our next step will be motor preparation. The first thing that we'll be doing is adding the exhaust gaskets to the engine itself. Once the exhaust gaskets have been added, we will be putting our muffler on and tightening the muffler down with the existing hardware given with the motor itself. At this point in time, you will be adding your oil to the engine, just a little bit over a quart Make sure that you check it on a stick to bring it to the correct position. Removing the engine from the board, all you'll be doing is taking your bolts out that the engine is fastened to it with. We will now be installing our clutch using the hardware given in the case. You'll be wiping your shaft down, getting all the oil off of it. You'll be placing two washers on the shaft first. After your shaft, your keyway will go into your shaft and then your clutch will be added. Use your flat washer and serrated washer on, add Loctite to your bolt, and secure it onto your main shaft itself. Tighten securely. Do not over tighten. Our next step will be to remove the top engine cover from the unit itself as well as the air filter. The side cover of the engine will also come off in this procedure. We will take the four bolts out of the plate that is underneath your air filter and pull that off. After taking the top cover off, what we'll be doing is installing your vacuum hose itself along with the clamp. Make sure your clamp is tight, running the hose down underneath and out the back side of the engine. Install your top cover your air filter, your air filter cover, and side engine cover itself. Connect your gas line to the existing gas line on the motor itself. Install your small clamp and tighten. Zip ties will be used on the rest of them to keep your two lines together for the length of the hose itself. Mounting our engine on the plate itself, you should have two people lifting the motor onto the frame. One is, is on the frame itself, take your bolts that are supplied in the kit for your mounting hardware. Before tightening the engine bolts, aligning of the wheel and the clutch has to be done. With the engine loose, run a straight edge from the clutch to the drive wheel, making sure that the straight edge is flush with the outside of the clutch to the outside of the drive wheel. Once this is accomplished, you can tighten your motor bolts down. We will now be installing the tension wheel. Take your main bolt itself, take your 3 8 washer, put it on your bolt, install it on the back of the bracket. You will now be putting another 3 8 and your third 3 8 Your wheel will be put on, then you will take your small 3 8 washer and your nut. Put this unit about midway down and tighten. We'll be putting our belt on to check the tension of it over the top of it, your clutch over the top of your idler and down on your wheel. Bring it up around the top of the belt and move it so the belt will go onto the wheel itself. 
What we're doing now is we're going to adjust the tension of the belt itself by moving the wheel, making sure that you have two fingers between the belt and the wheel. Rolling the belt right up on top of the wheel when done. You want to turn it about three times to make sure that the alignment is okay. If the belt does slip on it, you'll have to realign the wheel and the clutch again. You'll have to recheck that a second time. After zip tying the full length of the hoses, trim the excess off and we'll be ready to start mounting our gas tank and our lines together. Mount your gas tank into the mount of the frame itself, putting your tie down straps on to hold the gas tank securely. At this time, your mill head should be moved to the top as far up as it will go. From that point in time, you can trim your two different hoses itself, your gas hose and your EPA hose. Hooking them up, making sure that they're secure. Any excess that you have, make sure you cut off so it fits correctly. We are now ready to install the battery. The battery will be put in place on the battery tray on your mill. You will be securing it down with your tie down strap. Your red or your power will be mounted to your electric start as well as your positive connection on your battery. Put your black cable or your, your ground cable mounting it to the battery itself and also to be mounted at the bottom of the engine bowl. After the gas tank is installed, install your fuel into the tank itself. Using electric start, pull your choke out Turn your motor over. Once the engine runs, starts, make sure to let it run for a little while to warm up. The next procedure after warming up will be engaging the wheel to make sure that their belt does not flip on it. If the belt does flip on it, you'll have to realign the wheel and the clutch again. You'll have to recheck that a second time. There are two set screws in each bearing and you need to countersink the top set screw of each bearing. The bottom set screw is not countersunk. Just take the screw out, clean it, lock tight it, and tighten it back in again. Our next step will be to install the tension bolt and the blades. Take your package hardware out for your bolt assembly and your blade, lay them out so you can them. Installing the tension bolt, put in through the back to the front. You will be then putting a cup washer, your bearing, and your second cup washer, along with your nut and do not tighten. Just set your nut on the bolt itself for this time. At that point in time, we will push our wheel unit forward. We will now be installing the blade. Cut your zip ties free. Be extremely careful with this blade. It is extremely sharp. What you're going to do is unravel your blade Put it in on the side where your belt is on your wheel. Slide it through the mill itself. You want to put it on the edge of the unit and then on your other wheel itself. Come to the other side, bring your blade back up on top of your wheel. Make sure that your blade is aligned with the rear of the wheel. 
At that point, we're tightening it down. We are putting 35 foot-pounds of torque. We should make sure that the edges of the blade are smooth with the back side of the wheels. After rotating, check the edges of the if there is any overhang. If your blade is overhanging on the left, you will need to hit the right hand bearing. If your blade is on the right hand side of the wheel, you will need to hit your left hand bearing. Make sure that you feel the edge for alignment. We are now going to install the guide bars. You have two different bars. You have one large and one small. Installing the bars, you will use the large bar will go in the side where your T-handle is. The small bar will be inserted on the opposite side with a measurement of two and three quarters inches from the holder itself. We now will adjust the bolts so that the blade is one inch off the deck. Install the measurement bar and sight glass unit. With your package hardware, you'll have 3 8 by 1 inch bolts with washers and locking nut. Put your bolt through first with your washer. Put it through your bracket on the other side, your 3 8 washer and your locking nut. Tighten down securely. Mount your sight glass with a distance of one inch between the sight glass and the measurement bar itself. Secure with the zip screw and washer. Adjusting the head bolts so it raises and lowers level. Two eye bolts on the mill head have to be adjusted so that the mill head will lift straight up. This is done by watching the measurement bar lift straight up, without moving left to right. This is done by adjusting the lift bar bolts up or down. If the lift bar moves to the left, you adjust the right side bolt and you loosen it. If it pulls to the right side, loosen the left side bolt until the adjustment is complete and raises and lowers straight. We are going to install the guide pins and the guides into the brackets. Install the guide pins into the brackets itself so that the L shape is going to the outside of the mill. We are taking apart our guides, taking out our L and screw, and taking our shoes off. We are installing the blade guides onto the pins themselves, tightening down slightly. Do not tighten down fully. There will be a small space of approximately an eighth of an inch between your blade and your bearing. The bearing and the blade, the blade should fit right in the middle of the bearing on your adjustment. Then tighten your two bolts. Repeat the same procedure on the other side. Now we will make sure that the guides are level with the frame. Adjust on each side lightly, tapping till they are level with the mill frame itself. Once they are leveled, make sure you tighten them down good. The next step will be to apply the guide's shoes to the guides themselves. Putting your Allen screw through with your locking nut behind the unit itself. You can tighten that down with an Allen wrench. Making sure that when you put the shoes, compress the shoes together that they're not too tight on the blade itself so that the blade will move freely through the guides.
Again, checking to make sure that the blade moves freely through the guides themselves. If it feels too tight, just reset. We are now installing our lube tank system. First, we will install the bracket itself with the 3 8 by 1 inch bolts fitting into the holes. Secure the bracket tightly. We will now install the loop tank itself and the hole down strap. Again, make sure that the strap is secure and that the tank is on there good and tight. You will need to drill the holes for the lube line zip screws. Our next installation will be the lube tank line. You will have zip screws as well as the loop tank line holders in your hardware package. Put approximately six holders across the front of the unit itself. You'll be able to run your lube line through your holders up into the lube tank and also before it goes on make sure that the shutoff is put on with the hose coming from the lube tank itself. We are going to install your shutoff from your lube tank itself. From this procedure itself, down the lube tank, we are going to install our second shutoff. It will be just approximately past, halfway past the middle of the frame itself. Put into the holders where your zip screws are and just tighten down slightly. You'll be running a next line in from your shutoff down to your blade guide itself. We'll be running one more small black bracket off of the engine mount that will run right down to your loop bracket. <clears throat> what you're seeing here is an example of how we fit the lube line onto the mill at the shop itself. Our next step will be to install the throttle cable onto the engine itself. You'll need to drill two holes on your winch side for the two screws that will be holding your throttle cable. Once that's done, you'll be able to put your zip screws in. Do not tighten your zip screws down fully until both screws have been aligned in place with the throttle itself. Once this is done, you can secure them down tightly be very careful with these screws. If they are put down too tight, you might snap one. Lower the engine itself to the lowest point once that's done, and you'll be putting your throttle cable through your hole and feed down to the engine itself.
We are now going to do the installation of our end guards and our middle guards with our hardware laid out and our little plastic cap laid out we'll be good. Put the plastic caps in the holes that are existing both in the frame itself and in the mill head itself making sure that they're securely in place. The middle guard will be our first to put on the mill. You'll be using plastic washers on each bolt. Setting your center guard on top, you'll be using a washer, then a lock washer, then your nut. At this time, we don't tighten anything up until we have everything aligned. After our middle guard is complete, we will go to our two end guards. Our end guards will just be put on the end with the big washers that come in your kit. You will have a lock washer and then your nut again. Repeat on the other side. After everything is aligned, you can tighten it down, making sure that everything is straight, then secure. We will now be installing the scale on the measurement bar itself. First thing you want to do is clean the bar off, make sure that all the oil and dirt is off of it. Align the black line with the one inch line on your measurement scale. Just install your scale itself. Make sure that you keep it as straight as possible because that will have to do with your measurement. Be sure to add the warning and the caution stickers to the mill and customize it with our Warrior Design stickers and make it your own design. Before starting the motor, make sure the blade is tightened and adjusted correctly. All bolts and nuts on the machine must be tight. All the guards are secured. When starting the engine, run slow at first, making sure everything is running okay. Slowly bring up the throttle to full throttle, making sure that everything is still running smooth. Let it run full throttle for a short time, and shut it off. After all these procedures are done, the last procedure of the day will be to loosen the blade. You have to make sure that the blade is loosened every day when you're done using it. 